Welcome to you Reddit TTS. A grown man thought me and my friend were prostitutes, we were 11. When I was a kid, I used to go up to the Smoky Mountains and stay with my friend and her family for a few days to a week. One time, my friend's dad drove me and my friend down to Asheville, North Carolina, which was about an hour and a half away. My friend and I had put on a lot of makeup that day, because we were preteen girls and we were having fun with makeup. Even with the makeup, it was still very obvious that we were children. We went into a mellow mushroom to sit down and eat when a man who was probably in his 30s or 40s started talking to my friend. The situation quickly turned sinister when it became apparent that the man thought my friend's dad was a pimp, and he was interested in my friend. I'm pretty sure my friend's dad threatened to disembowel the guy, and then we all promptly left and drove back to the mountain home. My friend's dad had to explain to us later what happened, and why we went home so abruptly. My roommate is a huge creep. So I live in supported housing. This means that I basically have a room in a house that I share with others who have learning disabilities. When my best friend moved in, this one particular tenant, who we soon started to call a creeper, full on stalked her. He would lurk outside her room late at night, waiting for her to come out. If she did and come out, he would stay outside and knock on her window. He would watch her come out of the shared bathroom from the top of the stairs. He has tried to kiss her, and one time touched her on the shoulder and said he was looking after her when a support worker asked what he was doing. He has also waited on the stairs when her and I came back from a trip out at like half past 11 at night. Needless to say, we waited round the side of the building until he went away. He has also watched her through his blinds and has been warned at least three times by support workers to leave her alone. Now here is the worst part. He is 45, she is 22. And he has a girlfriend who has been with for 10 years. But he doesn't like her very much, judging by the frustrated phone calls he has with her on the daily. Now, he also displayed a milder form of this behavior when I moved in, but he started leaving me alone within a few months. But the difference with my friend is he is infatuated with her. So not only is he emotionally and physically trying to cheat on his girlfriend who he doesn't even seem to like, but he has been doing it since my friend moved in, which was at the beginning of the year. He needs to be charged with sexual harassment, and his girlfriend needs dump him. He needs to be thrown out of the house too. But his special needs seem to give people an excuse not to have him punished and am sick of it. If it weren't for whatever he has, he'd be in prison. I wanted to share this because I'm done with him. I want him to leave my friend alone. I want him out of the house. The staff aren't doing anything about it, so I'm going to take matters into my own hands. But what should I do? There was a guy in my house, and I pretended he wasn't there. So a bit of background info. I currently live with my parents, the house is two stories. There is an in-law apartment on the first floor, along with some other things, garage bay, furnace room, laundry room. I live in the in-law apartment. My dad has been working with the contractor and some of his employees to replace the wall-mounted air conditioners. There have been a lot of people in and out of the house. The day this happened, my mom and I went out to do some grocery shopping, and my dad stayed home to direct the contractors. We got back and discovered they were gone and my dad had gone to bed, so my mom and I made some dinner and hung out upstairs for a little while. I mentioned offhandedly to my mom that our cars were still outside, and I talked about a woman whose car and house had been broken into down the road. This creeped her out and she sent me downstairs to check that the front door was locked, it wasn't. In fact, it was a little bit ajar. I closed it and locked the deadbolt then went back upstairs. We stayed upstairs and watched TV for a few more minutes, until I heard a loud thump downstairs in the in-law apartment. I assumed that this was my cat, getting antsy because I wasn't feeding her. I told my mom that I was going to go downstairs to feed her and then come up to finish the episode. As I walked down the stairs I heard another, louder thump which I thought was my cat getting excited it was food time. I opened the door and she was nowhere to be found, really unusual for her, so I was confused. 
I walked into the kitchen to look for her and noticed something that made my heart sink. The furnace door was closed. I never close the furnace door, and neither do my parents, because we want the cat to be able to get inside to catch mice. I recognized then that the thunk I had heard could have been the heavy furnace door closing. I was completely frozen, convinced that there was someone right behind the door hiding from me. Now, I had seen a lot of scary movies lately and it could have been paranoia, but this felt awful and not right. I knew that I didnt want to give this potential person any reason to open the door. So I put on my best acting skills and pretended that I had noticed nothing amiss. I did some baby talk to my cat who still hadn't materialized and scooped out some food for her. I was super creeped out whenever I had to let the door out of my sight. I was basically keeping it in my vision at all times to see movement. After feeding the cat I went back upstairs. I grabbed my mom and explained what had happened. She was skeptical, again, scary movies, paranoid, and thought maybe one of the contractors had closed the door. But, seeing how off-put I was, she went to go wake up my dad. My dad grabbed his gun and went downstairs. He screamed up at us to call the cops and get somewhere safe. We hid in the bedroom and we called the cops, who showed up and searched the entire house, not finding anyone. My dad explained to me after they had gone through the house why he had said to call the cops. He saw that the furnace room door and the back door to the outside were both wide open. So, person who was hiding in my furnace room while my entire family was home, let's not meet again. The one time I saved a girl from being taken. So this happened when I was 19 or 20. I'm 31 now, rarely drink or go out anymore. But last weekend a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a couple of years asked me out, and we ended going to a club on the same street where this story takes place and reminded me of it. Legal drinking age in Brazil is 18, so people here start partying pretty early and let's face it, no one really knows their limits when they start drinking. My friends and I had gone to this club, I honestly can't remember the name right now, but I know it closed down a couple of years back. We had a great time, and the sun was coming up as we were leaving. Most clubs here give you a credit card when you walk in, where you either put in the money you plan on spending, or they work as a personal digital tab, where bartenders add up what you're drinking, and you pay for it on the way out. I pay for my stuff, and sit outside to wait for my friends, who were taking a long time to get out, probably due to being drunk at. As I'm sitting there, I notice a car across the street. Two dudes on the front seats, one out of the car trying to make this clearly drunk out of her mind girl get inside as well. She is mumbling, stumbling, struggling to keep her eyes open, and she is saying no, I don't want to go over and over, shaking her head, clinging onto the car door, as the guy keeps telling her to let go and get inside, that they're just going to a friend's apartment to drink some more, it'll be fun, come on. I watch, wondering if I should do something if no one else is seeing this happening. I look at the club security guard, he looks at me and shrugs, like it's not his responsibility. I look back at the girl, and I'm really uncomfortable, but also scared. My friends are still nowhere to be seen, I'm alone, the security guard is clearly not doing anything and there's three of the guys, what if they decide to try and get me too? The girl says one more time that she doesn't want to go with them, and before I realize what I'm doing, I'm getting to my feet and shouting hey. The guy stops trying to push the girl into the car for a moment and looks at me. She said she doesn't want to go, dude, I say, starting to make my way across the street, even though my hands are shaking, and my voice is probably not the most convincing. She's our friend, she's just drunk and being cranky, it's all good, we're just gonna take her home, he says. He seems a bit nervous and not exactly angry which makes me feel a bit better, or less scared. Do you know them? I asked her, and she just shakes her head no, using the door as support to keep herself on her feet. Creep number one, the one who was trying to push her into the car, looks at me, then to his friends, who seem frustrated, but start saying come on, man, let's go, just leave it. Creep number two, now looking a bit pissed, grabs the girl and pushes her towards me before getting into the car 
and they all leave. The girl nearly falls on her face, but I grab her and we walk back to the front of the club, my heart slowly going back to its normal rate. Only then I realize my friends had come out and were watching everything from across the street with confused faces. We all meet random people at clubs, at the door, walking down this street, so they probably thought I'd met someone. I start asking her what happened, if she's alone, where's all her stuff, and she's an incoherent mess, mumbling about losing track of her friends, her purse, she doesn't even know how she paid her tab to leave. I ask for some help to the security guard, he says he can leave his spot, he can't do anything. I explain what happened to my friends, and they talk to the hostess about it, who, begrudgingly goes and checks the lost and found. Her purse is thankfully there, minus the money she had in her wallet and we manage to call her parents. I talk to her mom, because the girl can't explain anything, and I promise to stay there until the mom comes to get her. Thirty minutes later the mom arrives, and I have never seen someone look so relieved and terrified at the same time. She thanks me and my friends profusely, and offers us a ride home, but... As we lived in the next town over, she just drives us to the subway station. In the middle of all the craziness I forgot to exchange numbers with any of them, so I've never heard of that girl or her mom again, but I hope she learned to be more careful with how much she drinks or who she talks to in clubs. Also shame on her friends for not looking out for her, or trying to find her when they realized she was missing though maybe they were all just as drunk as she was? Who knows? I know what I did was probably a bit reckless, but I wouldn't be able to just watch that car drive away and live with myself. Please be safe when going out people and creeps at nightclubs who try to take advantage of intoxicated people. Let's never meet again. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like comment and subscribe.